I had so much fun at PAX East, man. I got to see a bunch of my friends. I saw a big ass turtle. I got to ride in a monster truck. I got to play a bunch of games. I got to meet a lot of fans. I feel like I've been sucked into a tsunami of good ass games. I just got done beating Dark Souls 3 and the new Ratchet and Clank, both of which were incredible. Now I'm playing the new Star Fox right around the corner. You got Overwatch, May 10th, Uncharted 4, not to mention the 300 games that I saw at PAX last week. Of course, we're still waiting on Ukulele, No Man's Sky, What Time, Zelda, Horizon Zero Dawn, Last Guardian, but now there's a whole lot more to look forward to. First, we got Flint Hook. In a crowd of 20 other roguelikes, this one really stood out to me because it does not feature permadeath. I understand that adds a lot of longevity and tension to these games, but fuck you permadeath, go into garbage. I hope the game can still maintain that intensity and challenge you expect from the genre while disposing of the repetitive playing the same levels and bosses over and over again. The mechanics look very tight and satisfying, the grapple hook, the bullet time, the shooting, the sprites, this game is right up my alley. Then, we got another interesting roguelike with Necropolis. It's a four player co-op Dark Souls type game. If all four people die, I think it's game over, but the interesting part is you can pick each other up if you die. And there's also friendly fire, so it becomes a lot harder to focus down and cheese one NPC as a team. It also becomes a very hilarious comedy game for me. I'm uh, really looking forward to ruining this game for all my friends. Do you ever just sit at your desk, looking at the wall, eating Cheetos, and you think to yourself, they should make another Power Stone? They're making another Power Stone, baby! <laughs> I mean, technically, this game is called Last Fight. But look at this shit, it's just Power Stone, baby! <laughs> it's just Power Stone. Unfortunately, this game does not have online play at the time. What is this? Power Stone! <laughs> Also, look at this game. It's Power Stone with robots. How you gonna have Power Stone but with robots? <laughs> Hab. Polly, bring up the gameplay for Hab. No. Polly? That's not right. Chain. God damn it, Polly! Hab is a culmination of a lot of great titles with a very emotive, isometric aesthetic of its own. There's no dialogue, no annoyances so far. You're just platforming, fighting monsters, and exploring the game's world. And there's a grapple hook, so you already know it's gonna be good. Manual Samuel reminds me of Octodad, except this game has a much stronger focus on telling a story. It looks like a very sophisticated game, it looks like a game that takes itself very seriously. So don't you ever laugh at this, because this is art, and art is not funny. Run and gun shooters are brutal, they are so crushingly difficult. I love these beautiful hand animated graphics and the variety and creativity I'm seeing with the bosses, but I hope the developers of Cuphead can manage that insane level of difficulty into something actually beatable. If they can strike that balance, this could be one of the best games of the year. Psionics, why aren't you guys making a Twisted Metal game right now? Do you want me to die? The one for PS3 was one of the most creative, fun multiplayer games I've ever played. So my design philosophy now for games is just take vehicles and combine that with any genre. Case in point, Cluster Truck, a 3D platformer where you jump across trucks. If that premise doesn't sound exciting, you may be a fucking dick clown. The jumping and the weight of your character feel just right, the levels are challenging, but every time you start over it's a little different because you never know what will happen to the trucks. Sometimes they're getting knocked into space by a giant hammer, they crash into each other, they explode, they drive off the track. I'm really, really looking forward to playing this again. Also, Omnibus. Now this looks like the most badass game ever to be released on PS1. You can actually download the demo if you type that link into your internet.
Lumo looks like a relaxing and accessible puzzle game, and that's exactly what I'm looking for after playing The Witness earlier this year. That game broke me down on an emotional level. It was like playing Portal, except somebody reversed the screen, turned it upside down, and half of it was missing. That's how I felt playing The Witness. Lumo, this looks much simpler, and it features Bubba Ducky. He doesn't just appear in anything, he's very selective. Behemoth's new game, Pit People, did not belong at PAX. It's not a game where you can just jump in and play for a quick 10 minutes. It's a game where you have to sit down and play for 3 or 4 hours at a time. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is a big departure from their other projects. It plays more like Fire Emblem than uh, action platformer. But it still has that signature charm and heart that you expect from these guys. I said Horatio dies! Oops! Butterfinger! Steam says this game will in fact be available before the apocalypse, so that's before Last Guardian. Speaking of games that will never be released, Final Fantasy XV was originally announced in 2006 for a AAA developer to take a decade making a massively budgeted sequel? This shit is unheard of. Square has taken on such an enormous risk with this game, and from the looks of it, it has paid off. I wouldn't at all consider myself a fan of the series, but just look at this shit, man. They ditched the turn-based combat for an action-oriented next-gen Kingdom Hearts battle system. Holy shit. Day. Holy shit. What the fuck? The look best. at how cool this is. My biggest concern is the story. These games are notorious for corny-ass anime writing. I'd love for them to leave that shit behind. That may be asking for too much. Either way, you get to play as the Backstreet Boys who drive a flying car. Japanese people, please keep snorting coke and keep making these incredible video games. Go mad. I feel like Overwatch is just gonna stomp out every online shooter for the next three years. But perhaps, if Lawbreakers goes free to play, it can fill that arena shooter void that we're experiencing right now. Doom's multiplayer fell flat on its face. That shit sucked. This game, however, has a grapple hook. Do you have a grapple hook, Overwatch? I think not, you piece of shit.